How you doing? How's it going? Happy Wednesday. It's Leona. Hi. Today we are going to do some mandala art. I am so excited to do this with you today. I hope you're well and good. I hope you've been keeping well and safe. So the way this works, if you're new to the stream and if you're watching this in the replay, welcome. Uh, if you're new to the stream, the way this works is that I will be looking over here at my laptop and this is where all the comments come in. So when you come in the room, sign into your Google account or your YouTube account, sign in, subscribe to the channel, then come into the chat box and have a chat with me because I'm here to provide you with this great art lesson for free and I would love it if you can come and subscribe and chat with me, that would be amazing. Stampy Star Creation with Esther. Hi Esther, how you doing? Happy Wednesday, how are you sweetheart? How's it going? Yay! So we're gonna make some mandala art today. Um, there's lots of people coming in the room at different times today, so I'm gonna like start off by giving you a little kind of lowdown about mandala art and some of the mandalas that I've created in the past. So I basically, well let's actually, let's start with what a mandala is. A mandala is basically an artwork that starts with the center point and comes outward. It can be circular, it can be a circle within a square. There's lots of different variations of it and it basically comes from Tibet. So it was originally birthed in Tibet many, many, many years ago. And it was kind of like a religious thing really, but we're not using it for any kind of religious means or anything like that. We're simply doing it because it's a beautiful way to create art. Plus it's just really easy. You can break it down really, really simply. So it's really super easy. And I'm gonna teach you today the easiest possible way I know to create a mandala with things that you've got around your house, all right? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I made Mandala Star with Stamps the other day. Oh, amazing. Oh, you have to share with me. Share with me on Instagram or on Twitter or on Facebook. I'd love to see. Uh, yeah, so I made this adult colouring book quite a few years ago now. 2016, I think it was. Yeah, 2016. And this is my colouring book called Colour My Soul. And it's basically based on mandalas very loosely. I've called it Colour My Soul, Mandalas for Empowered Reflection. And basically, in this book, there are 31 different artworks. And they're all, they've all got a different theme. And you can colour the artwork based upon the theme. So, let me show you. Hi, hi Jane, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Are you coming early? Yay! Uh, Alan Luscious Leona, my lovely friend. Hi Alan, how you doing? Thank you for logging in. I thought you weren't going to log in. Amazing. Awesome, awesome. So I'm just showing my colouring book just to give you like a little idea of some kind of modern kind of mandalas because you've probably seen, I mean, if you open a new tab and have a look and search mandala art, you'll see a lot of the old Tibet, Tibetan mandalas. You'll see just a whole host of beautiful, very intricate mandalas. But what we're gonna do today is something really, really simple so anyone can do it. If you haven't done any art before in your whole entire life, you will be able to do this. All right, <laughs> Ava and Mira, good evening. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. How are you? So yeah, if you're new to this stream, I'm gonna be looking at the chat over here and talking to whoever comes in the room, saying hello, asking me questions throughout. Um, oh, and if you're not gonna come in, because I know there are quite a few people that are gonna be watching who aren't in the chat, for example, my niece, Juanina, big shout out to you, sweetheart. How you doing? <laughs> my mum is also here. Hi, mum. How you doing? <laughs> Got off the butt. Got to have my mum on at some point, right? My mum's here. Hi, mum. <laughs> Who else is here? Oh, Juliet is here. Hi, Juliet. How you doing? <laughs> So always before the stream, if you know you're going to come in, but you're not going, to, you're not going to come in the chat. Let me know, and I'll give you a little shout out. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is my colouring book. I'm just going to run through it super quickly, just to give you a really brief idea on some mandalas. Uh, so obviously we've got the front cover, and I've coloured some of these in. Not all of them actually. I've coloured some of them in. So like this one. This one's called Unlock the Gateway. They're all kind of got meanings behind them and there's like a little saying, like a kind of a 
sort of something you can use as a guided meditation with each colour in. So the kind of the idea was you colour an artwork and then you feel connected to the artwork and it brings out a certain aspect that you might want to meditate about. So that's what I did back in 2016, which is super fun. So yeah, I'm just gonna just click, quickly go through, give you a couple. And I did a lot of these on Periscope. So I used to go live on Periscope a lot about three years ago. And I colored these in. Here's one that's not colored. So it gives you an idea that basically, you know, a mandala can be whatever you want it to be. As long as it starts from a center point and comes out, that's all you need to know, right? That's all you need to know. It doesn't have to be this big, intricate, complicated, Thing unless you want it to be right unless you want it to be see like that one's really super simple all right so that's like a little explanation of that I'm gonna give you loads and loads of hints and tips as we go through I hope you're liking the lighting again I've got the lighting happening Tammy how you doing Tammy how's it going hey I remember you doing these I know I used to love doing those it was so much fun just chilling out and drawing them all and then making them into a book and then getting the book printed and then selling it and then colouring them all in, so much fun. Uh, all right, so for today's super simple, easy, beginners mandala with no experience required, required <laughs> is you will need something to draw on, right? So we got a piece of paper piece of paper it can be anything it can be like an a4 printer paper that you've got at home i've got an a3 sheet of paper because i always tend to work on a3 i just find it easier but whatever you've got lying around is good i'm probably going to use it vertically like this but you can do it horizontally doesn't matter all right you're going to need a pencil and any pencil will do again doesn't matter whatever you've got whatever you've grabbed brilliant you're also going to need a ruler uh, with centimetres. I'm going to work in centimetres. If you want to convert that to inches, obviously you can. But I'm going to work in centimetres. We have got your basic staples eraser because you're probably going to need an eraser for this because you want to kind of like neaten things up as you go and all that kind of stuff. So definitely need an eraser. I've got a sharpener just in case. And I don't want to get your sharpenings all over your paper. I don't want to do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, and I've got this little kind of plastic tub which just collects all the sharpenings and hopefully doesn't get it over your paper, do you know what I mean? Uh, you're going to need some black pens. Now, this is kind of optional. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the mandala and then we're going to go over it with black pen. So you can, if you really want to like go to town, you can have all different thicknesses. Like I've got these fine liner pens and I don't know if you can see, but basically they're like just super, super, super fine. I hope you can see that all right. Uh, but you could use a biro, it really doesn't matter. I've also got, got a Sharpie. So if you've got a felt tip pen, that's quite good. So you kind of can have different thicknesses. The advantage, being a beginner, if you are a beginner and haven't done anything like this before, if you have different thicknesses, it really helps when you make a mistake. So if you do something with the thin one and then you're like, oh my God, I didn't like that, it didn't quite join up or something, then you can use the thicker one to kind of disguise it. Top tip, so but equally it doesn't matter. And equally, if you don't want to use any kind of black pen and you just want to leave it in pencil, that's fine, all right? You're also going to need your colouring pencils. So I've got these ones which I've just used forever, which are Derwent Colour Soft, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Uh, they're just so beautiful. There's 24 there and they just they really blend really nicely. So if you want to make your artwork look really gorgeous, something that's blendable works really nicely, but equally. If you've got a couple of colouring pencils lying around and you're like, I'm going to grab those, grab those. You could do it in felt tips if you want as well. So if you've got felt tips, you could even do a combo. You could do a combo. Shout outs for the combo. If you want to do pencils and felt tip pens, you can do that. And then you're going to need now, because what we're going to do is we're going to kind of repeat things. So can you see here? We've got like an image, this figure here is repeated a few times. So there's gonna be uh, parts of this mandala that's repeated. 
So you can either do that freehand, and it's quite easy to do freehand when it's small, but when you get bigger, you kind of need something to help you out. So for that, you're going to need some tracing paper. Now, no problem if you haven't got any, but if you have got some, it's going to make your life super, super, super easy. So if you've got some tracing paper, get it now. Run to the hills, get that tracing paper. If you don't have any tracing paper, a really good solution is to make a template. Do you remember if you were here, let me know in the chat if you were here for the fabric painting one, we made some templates. You can also use that same technique here. So you can get some scrap card. So can you see I've written on it, scrap card. So if you've got like a bit of junk mail or a bit of packaging or even a box like a tea bag box or something like that grab that now because that's going to come really useful it doesn't have to be very big like this is less than an a4 size so scrap card and some scissors to make a template okay so that's what you need either tracing paper or scrap card and scissors and i'm going to show you both techniques okay uh oh i think i have it upstairs tracing paper yeah go go get it go get it uh, so yeah, so make sure you've got either one of those, or if you haven't got those, don't worry about it, you can do it freehand, right? Do you know what I mean? It's all good. You know, we're, we're making it work, we're in the lockdown, we're making it all work, I'm making everything easily and accessible and happy days. And then the last thing you're going to need are a variety of circles. So, cue the massive pile of things I've got over here. Now, oh, I don't think I'm gonna use this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So you're gonna need some circles and you're gonna need circles that are different sizes. I would say, like usually what you do, if you were doing like this very professionally, you would maybe do it on graph paper or something first and you do it with compasses and all that kind of stuff. But we're not doing that. We're like, what have I got around my house? I've got a plate. I'm going to use a plate. So you want to get a small plate. You want to make sure that it fits your piece of paper, right? You don't want to use a circle that's too big for your paper, right? Make sure that it actually fits on your paper. So you need something that's going to be your largest circle. So I've got a plate. I've got, and then you need just different size circles, right? So I've got this little bowl that I'm going to use. And we're going to draw around all of these, all right? You can use a cup or a mug whatever you've got and uh, I've got some sellotape like different sizes because obviously the more you use it the smaller it gets so you could use different like this one's hardly got any left on this masking tape uh, we've got this one I've also got a glue lid like of a glue that I just ran out of like literally today actually uh, so that's really good and then for a really small one like we need something really small I'm just gonna use my pen lid so I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to draw around this side. So when you're choosing anything to draw around, so if you're looking around the house now and you're listening to me <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, quick, I need to find some circles. Um, just make sure that it's a complete circle because something like a jam jar lid is not going to work because you know they've got their little indentations on them and you're not going to get like a clean sweep of a circle. So just bear that in mind, it's something might have ridges on it, like this glue lid has got ridges on it, but it's not all the way to the bottom, so I can use that bottom, I know that's quite like nice and smooth. So just bear that in mind, whatever you're grabbing in the house, just grab a few things, maybe five or six things, and then we're gonna have a play and work out and how it kind of all fits, all right? So that is everything you need. Let me know in the chat, you've got everything, you're sitting comfortably, and we're gonna begin. We're gonna begin with all of these circles. So, I am gonna go to my other camera so you can have a look. Let's go, go, go. And we shall begin, yes, success. All right, so, get your pencil, put everything else out of the way for now and make sure it's sharp or as sharp as you can get it. Oh, Tammy found the tracing paper, awesome. Yes, fantastic, fantastic. All right, so what you wanna do is get your largest circle. 
So choose, in my case, this is like a side plate. I'm working on A3. If you're working on A4, you might just get a side plate or maybe like a teacup and saucer plate would work. And then you wanna kind of do it in the center of your paper. Now, I'm not gonna spend time, remember this is easy, easy, easy project. I'm not gonna spend time working out where the center of the paper is. Ain't got time for that, all right? So you're just gonna roughly estimate where's the sort of center. It doesn't really matter. You might even wanna do it like kind of lower on the paper or higher. I don't mind, it doesn't matter, all right? So we're gonna get our beautiful plate. We're gonna put it somewhere in the middle, if we can. Mine's probably gonna be a little bit closer to me than exactly in the middle. You're gonna get your pencil and you're just gonna draw around it. La 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 la. Boom, done. Draw around it. Easy. I told you this was gonna be easy. <laughs> So that's all you got to do, draw around so you've got a nice circle. Let me make sure that you can see that on the thing. I might even, actually I might even press a little bit harder. So you've got a nice big circle. I might just press a little bit harder so you can like super see it on the camera. So I'm going to go back over it and press a bit harder, but you don't have to do this obviously. Hopefully you see that a bit better. Yay, Halo's in the house. How you doing, sweetie? Yay, just finished sharing your live post on Facebook, you sweetheart. Thank you so much. Done. Is it supposed to be light or dark for hours? I would just go for light. I would say let's put light pressure with the pencil because if you want to go and outline it with black later on, then you might want to erase your pencil. So I would like keep it light. Keep the pencil light always. Uh, Ikea Kids Play, yes! And talking about Ikea, I've got a little Ikea bowl. I think these were like 20p. Do you remember when these came out a few years ago? So I'm gonna use this for my next one. So choose your next size down. And it really doesn't matter like how much space you've got around it. Like it could be something that kind of comes closer. Now obviously you haven't got the same things as me, right? You haven't got the exact plate that I've got. You haven't got the exact bowl that I've got. You haven't got the exact sellotape and the way that is. And that's absolutely fine. That doesn't matter. So my next one is going to have quite a big gap from the outside plate to the little bowl. I've got quite a big gap, but if your gap is smaller, it just doesn't matter, all right? The designs are going to work. I'm going to give you loads and loads of inspiration. You can completely copy my design or you can do your own thing. I don't really mind. It's up to you. So don't freak out if your size isn't the same as my size. It does not matter, all right? So what you're gonna do, I've got tape. Yes, Tammy, come on. So what you're gonna do is, um, yeah, I'm easily pleased, guys. Easily pleased. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna get your next size circle down. And this is the kind of only tricky bit, I guess, really, is just to kind of see and make sure that this is central. So I would put a couple of fingers on top of whatever it is, plate, bowl, cup, anything. Sellotape, you might be going for the sellotape. Mine is just a bit bigger than sellotape, so I'm going for that now. And then just try and put it in the middle somewhere, right? Just try and get it in the middle. And you know, you don't even have to worry about it if it's not completely central, because this is beginners, right? So we're gonna go round all the way around, tracing around the next shape. All right? And just don't even worry. If it's a little bit wider on one side, it's a little bit on the other side, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. So, looking good, looking good. Oh, actually, maybe I should go around it a bit darker again, actually. Hold on, I'm gonna go around darker. So you can see this, so you're pressing lightly 
and I am pressing quite hard so you can see on the camera, all right? So you wanna press lightly. So we got two circles, whoop whoop. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> oh right, what shall I do? What shall I do? I don't know, tell me. Um, sweet, all right. So I'm gonna go to the next one. So I'm gonna get some sellotape now. So I've got two different sellotapes and obviously one is like slightly bigger than the other. So I'm gonna choose the biggest one, right? So I'm gonna get the biggest one and I am going to place it in the, again in the center. Two circles done. Awesome. So I'm gonna place it in the center and I'm looking around the object, whatever your next size down one is, and you're just looking around to see that it's kind of in as central as you possibly can. Right, as central as you possibly can. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna draw around it. Oh yes, we are. Again, I'm gonna go super, super press, super, super hard. You are gonna press nice and lightly because you don't have to worry about showing me, but I have to worry about showing you, right? So, three circles. Jeannie, how you doing, Jean? Hey, hey, draw my circles, boom, love it. Three circles done, yes, we love it, good job. So, I've got left my masking tape, which is a bit smaller, I've got my glue top, the lid of a glue, and I've also got my pen top. So I'm gonna do another three circles. You might only have two more things left, okay? I would say you definitely need two more things at this stage. If you haven't got two more things, go run for the hills, grab it from somewhere. You need two more things minimum, all right? Showing me, showing you. Uh-huh, <laughs> I love it, Esther. Oh, I'm so happy you're here, yay. Da, 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 da. All right, so masking tape for me, I'm gonna again place it, excuse me if my head is coming in the frame there. Uh, I'm gonna place it around, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna draw on the inside of the masking tape because obviously that's smaller, right? gonna make sure I mean it's gonna be sort of rough but we're gonna go for it and I'm gonna go on the inside the great thing about doing tape is that obviously you can kind of see oh and I looked up and look what happens I'm gonna have to erase that we have six too many no that's great that's great that's great so can you see I'm just erasing that little bit when I looked up at the camera and lost my concentration but the split second oh my god so I'm gonna go back over that. All right, so again, mine's nice and dark. I'm putting lots of pressure on, but you guys just nice and light, okay? Nice and light, nice and light. And then I'm gonna go for my glue lid. So you just keep going with whatever you've got. Looks cool with some close together and others further apart, exactly. You want that kind of variation, it's really, really super nice. So if you've got like some circles that are just only like a few millimeters in difference, that looks great. Whatever you've got, it honestly, it's gonna work. Whatever you choose, it's gonna work and look beautiful. All right? So I'm gonna choose now my little glue lid. So just keep going. Once I've done all my circles, I'll pause for a minute, let everyone catch up, and then we'll go on to the next bit, all right? So um, it gets kind of a little bit tricky when you get smaller because you've got to really, I might even just pull this down for a sec. You've got to really sort of like have a look. What you can do is you can hold it in place and you can just do some little dots around like this, like four little dots. I might get my big head out of the way. So do four little dots around and then just take it out and you can kind of see if it's in the center or not or if you need to move it about, because obviously you can just like erase the dots, right? So just do your best to get it in the middle. 
You could press like super, super lightly for the first one as you go round to just see if it's in the middle. Yeah, see, mine's a bit high, so I'm gonna erase it and do it again. So I'm gonna just put it a little bit lower this time and hopefully that'll be kind of in the center. So if you get really, really super into mandala art, you can get yourself some graph paper and you can do it on that. You can put graph paper under paper so you can see the little grid lines and stuff like that. There's loads of ways you can do it to make it like super precise. Ooh. <laughs> I'm using an eight and a half times 11 sheets of paper so I only have five circles ended with a Crayola marker top. Amazing, and I'm so happy you're doing it this time, Tammy, because you were doing um, your knitting, weren't you, last time? So I'm so happy you're joining in today. Fantastic, yeah. All right, so I'm happy with where that is. I mean, it's not exactly in the middle, but... Sailor B, we're not worried about it. All right, so I'm gonna go round. Do, 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 do. Ba -ba. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of worked out all right. And then you can just erase anything as you go. Doing really good. Doing really, really good. So this is kind of like your foundation. So it's really important that like you just spend a bit of time making sure this is all good and you're happy with it. I'm gonna now finally do my final one, which is like the top of the pin. The knitting is sitting right. Oh, it's calling you. <gasps> it's calling you in. I love it. Don't you just love when a project does that? When you're called back to do it. So great. Okay, I'm going to get my pen lid. I'm going to take it off. And this is pretty small, this circle. So I'm going to do my best. And obviously one side of it has got like the actual, whatever that's called, the clip. So I'm not going to use that end, I'm going to use the end that doesn't have a clip, right? So make it easy for yourself. So if you've got something like that. And then I'm going to kind of hold it in place with my finger. And then go round. Go round, go round. I mean, that looks fine to me. That looks fine to me. I draw all along with my arm. Is it? Oh my god! I'm so sorry, Halo. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. Uh, sorry, but duty because I'll be in touch. Thank you so much for coming along, Esther. It's lovely to see you. Hope you get to finish it off on the replay. Halo, sending you loads of love. All right, I'm gonna just press a bit harder with this just so you guys can see super clearly. Again, I know I'm repeating myself a bit here, but I have drawn one, two, three, four, five, six circles, so. <laughs> I've got to, right? What else could I do but repeat myself six times? So you should have something like that. And again, it doesn't matter if your circles are bigger, smaller, closer together, further apart, doesn't really matter. That's where all the creativity comes in and it's kind of what is enjoyable about this process, right? This is what makes it really fun. So no kind of two mandalas can kind of be the same if you're gonna use different kinds of materials, right? And different size plates and bowls and whatever you can find. Uh, it's easier to stand and draw the circles from above. Top tip from Jean. That is very true. It would be much easier to stand up and have a look over, yeah. Cause I'm was kind of like stretching over, so 100%. I wish I'd have thought of that earlier, Jean. That was a real top tip. <laughs> Do we need to hang on to these objects to go over the circles? Uh, yes, I would hang on to them. Yeah, have them down below, next to you, on the table, wherever you can. You can, it's optional really, if you use them or not, optional. In pen or freehand? Yeah, well that's the, that's the option. When we get to that stage, which is gonna be later, um, you can either use the objects or you can do it freehand, or you can not do the black pen at all. Yeah, loads of options. We've got all the options, we've got all the options. All right, so are we ready to move on? Um, how are you getting on, Jane, you all right? Okay, 
So I'm going to get my ruler now. So let's get your ruler. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark the center point. Now we can kind of see the center point quite clearly because the circle in the center should be pretty small. So it should be quite easy. You know, your center circle shouldn't be really bigger than this. You want to keep it quite small, I think. You don't have to, but it's easier to find the center if it's smaller, right? So draw yourself a little dot in the center. Draw yourself a dot in the center. Oh yeah, draw yourself a dot. And then do a little boogie. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is draw some lines so if you want to sharpen your pencil now it's probably a good time to do that if you need to uh, apart from that what we're going to do is we're just going to do a series of lines so we're going to do a line going right through the center so i mean if you had a set square that would be pretty amazing but like i haven't got one handy right now and i'm sure you haven't either so we don't need to worry about it we're just going to do it by eye we're going to try and make it as straight as we possibly can so can you see how i'm holding it here with my fingers like quite wide apart and what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're just going to make a line down here so we're just going to literally start from the top of the circle end at the bottom of the very largest circle again you want to press super super lightly this is so you can erase any lines at the end i'm going to press super hard because i want you guys to see it i'm just going to go lightly just to double check that it is in the middle and then i'm going to press super 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 hard but i want you to press nice and lightly did i mention that i want you to press nice and lightly <laughs> <laughs> oh boogie in yeah you can have a little boogie in the middle right you gotta send all that boogie into the to the artwork and then you end up with a really fun and fab like energetic artwork right uh if it's not perfectly centered it's still cool right of course doesn't matter i'm not expecting perfection i never expect perfection because it's unobtainable and it's also depressing so don't reach for it just do your best right okay so we're going to go across the other way and again we're going to just try and do it straight so we've got one vertical line we're going to do one horizontal line going across uh and we're just going to try and do it as straight as we possibly can and not worry about it too much so again i'm going to just go super light just to double check Yes, if you want to do that first, you can have a little double check and see if that's in the right spot. And then I'm going to press super hard so you guys can see. But again, please press lightly. And it's all going to be fine. Oh, yeah. So you should have something like that. Looking good, looking good. <laughs> hey, love, I'm trying to think of something you can do without your hands. What about your other hand? How's your other hand? How's your other hand? Could you do some non-dominant hand drawing or sculpting or something? Maybe. All right, so when you've got your, looking a bit like a target, isn't it now? We're going to do two diagonal lines. So we're going to go this way and we're going to go this way. And then we're done with the ruler, all right? So that's all we're going to do. We're going to kind of make a cross, all right? Now, the easiest way to do that is to kind of look at each segment. So you want to look at the segment and then you want to kind of see and make a little mark where the halfway point is roughly, yeah just have a look you can measure it right but i just don't want to get into the technicalities of measuring things because i think we just need to have an easy life right so then i'm going to come across to the one opposite it and again i'm going to kind of have a look where i think the middle might be and these two little lines are going to kind of just help me just guide as i'm going through the center dot right 
So you want to kind of look at the centre dot and then you want to sort of align your two marks up as best you can. Now can you see that when I'm lining mine up, they're both coming a little bit underneath? And I'm just going to go for it because the distance between my little mark and the ruler on either side is kind of equal. So I'm thinking that's going to work. I'm just going for it, right? So I'm going to do it nice and lightly just to check. I'm going to pull it out and then when you just do it lightly, really lightly to check, you just look at the two segments and just see, oh, are they kind of a similar size? And if they're kind of similar and you're like, yeah, that's all right, then just go over it with your pencil again. And again, I'm pressing super hard. You don't have to press super hard. You guys can see that quite nicely, can't you? Yeah, that's looking good. And then I'm just gonna erase my little marks that I made. Right? Looking good. One more line to go and then we get onto the super fun stuff of making all the decorations, which I've got loads and loads of suggestions for you to choose from. Get ready to express yourself. Oh yeah. Put on the Madonna song if you want. I can't for obvious reasons. <laughs> oh no, the other Express Yourself song. Who's that by? Oh my God. That song, they used to have it for the theme tune of um, that TV show that I can't think of the name of. You know, express yourself. Do, 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 do. That's all I can do. That's one of my favorite songs. Anyway, let's carry on. So we're gonna do the same again. You might have already done it. You might be Leone just waffling. Uh, so let's find the center point now of this big chunk. So these two big kind of sections here. We're gonna roughly think, where's the center? Oh, I think it's about there. Then I'm gonna look at this section here. I'm gonna think, where roughly is the center? Just using my eye, thinking, where is it? And then you're gonna do the same again. You're gonna get your pencil in the dot in the middle, and then you're gonna rest your ruler on that. Oh, and again, I've kind of got a little gap the same size gap again on either side. Isn't that interesting? I did exactly the same thing again. So I'm gonna press super lightly, go through. I'm gonna double check. I mean, I, that looks fine. That looks fine. I'm now gonna press a bit harder. You guys don't worry about that. Boom. First section done. Okay. Uh, boogieing, amazing. It's not, if it's not public yet, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, okay, all right, okay, okay. Let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. Let's do that. All right, someone in the chat just drop me a like, a smiley face or something so I know that the chat is still happening. That would be amazing, thank you. I'm going to erase my little bits, those two little kind of guide marks there. Just sort of neaten up the bit where the rubber's gone. All right, kind of happy. It's looking fab. We're doing really good. We're doing really good. So we don't need our ruler now. So we can kind of just get rid of that, get that out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna have a little chat just really, really quickly just about the template thing and the tracing paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create loads of shapes and you can either use for this, to repeat the shape, you can either use a tracing paper or you can use scrap cards and scissors, all right? And I'm gonna show you both of those things and how to use them, all right? So, it's gonna be super exciting. So make sure you've got those things to hand now, all right? Bring them forward so they're with you. We don't need the black pens or anything. We can get that out of the way. Uh, what's happening? What do you mean? Oh, has it gone off? I can't Just read the chat. Read the chat, read the chat. Oh, we got some chat. 
Oh, we got some chat coming through. Is it working? Oh, good, looking good. Oh, amazing. I can't see the chat for some reason, so we're just gonna let, uh, just let the internet do its thing and let it write itself, right? Because I can't see the chat. I've put it in slow mode, um, so I'm just gonna carry on. Thank you for that. All right, so, uh, yeah. So let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. I wanna go to the other camera. Um, I'm going to have a look at my chat on here then. Looking good. Thank you, Jean. Loving this. Thank you, Halo. Thank you, sweet pie. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose some shapes, right? Now I've drawn you this little thing here to give you some ideas about the kind of things you can do. All right. So you've got, have a little look at this for a second. So these are like a bunch of suggestions of things that you can put inside your mandala and I'm going to choose things and I'm going to do it so you can copy mine or you can just go ahead and make your own things up and put them in the places where I'm going to put them all right always going to be revealed if that sounds complicated it's not all right so here's some ideas for your mandala we got dots we got vertical lines we got horizontal lines we got diagonal lines we got zigzags we got waves we got chevrons, we got swirls and circles. There's so many things that you can put inside a mandala and you wanna, as I'm showing you this list, like just be thinking, oh, what kind of things do I like of these, right? Uh, yeah, we've got circles and semicircles. We've got scalloped edges, which basically just loads and loads of semicircles going on and on. We got raindrops. Maybe you're into raindrops. Maybe you wanna do a raindrop themed mandala, you can. We've got squares and rectangles. So if you like lots of like kind of angles and linear things, you can do that. We've got diamonds, we've got triangles, which is really similar, right? Because the diamond is like two triangles on top of each other. And then we've got kind of other stuff. So we've got things like hearts and flowers and stars and leaves and fish and all that kind of stuff. What I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna put this up to the other camera so you can see like super clearly as well. So I don't know if this one is a little bit far away. So have a look here at some of these. I'm just gonna put it in front of my face so you can see. So there's a bunch of ideas, right? There's a bunch of ideas for you to do. How's that looking? Look at that. Check it. Oh, and combinations. So you can do combinations as well. So you can do combinations of like circles and dots or hearts and stars or vertical and horizontal lines or zigzag and dots like literally whatever you kind of fancy right it's gonna be really cool okay so i'm gonna carry on i'm gonna um do you want it can you get mine zach could you get my phone and then i can have a look it's on the desk in the other room thanks on it all right so what we're gonna do first of all, or let's go back to the camera. Uh, what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna work inside. Now in the smallest circle, I think we're gonna work from the inside and we're gonna grow out, okay? So we're gonna go in here and then we're gonna grow out and out and out and out, okay? So in the smallest, smallest circle, I wanna just leave it. I don't wanna do anything in the very, very smallest circle because I just think it's too small, there's not much area there, let's not worry about it, okay? And equally for now, I'm gonna leave my second circle because I'm gonna come back and do something there later. So if you've got a really, really small space, I'm gonna say let's leave that and we're gonna go on to the next bit. I'm gonna go and start putting things in these sections here, these segments here, right? So having a little think, you can use any of those things that I just talked about, squares, triangles, diamonds, swirls, anything you like. I'm gonna do kind of like a pointed arch, like this. Oh, that doesn't help you, when let's go on here. So kind of like this. So what I'm gonna do is in these sections, so I'm just focusing on these sections now, I'm gonna start on any one, for any of these segments, I'm going to draw a little line kind of about halfway at the top so I know where to start my arch from 
and then I'm gonna make a little arch. I'm gonna draw it super lightly to start with. Kind of almost a bit like a petal, because my mandala is gonna be kind of a bit flowery, because obviously nature, I'm a nature lover, you know, and the walks that we're going on at the moment are just so important. So I'm kind of just thinking about a bit in a nature sort of theme. So can you see I've done this kind of like petal, shape here like that and then what you want to do is you need to repeat this shape in all of these segments going round okay and there's a couple of ways to do that that is the tracing paper way or making a template way all right so or you can do it freehand you can just go for it you can find the center point there and you can just do another arch, all right? But I'm gonna show you the two ways, all right? To repeat it really easily. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of tracing paper. This is like to make it super neat, right? So if I wanna repeat this pattern, the easiest and most simple way is to get a bit of tracing paper, go over the top, of my design so of that shape i just chose and yours could be anything can be completely different to mine or the same as mine and then all i'm going to do is flip over the tracing paper go to the next segment make sure it's aligned i might want to put a little line there for the roughly for the center point and then i'm just going to press on the other side of the tracing paper and it's going to come out like that happy days are here again and this is the technique that i used to make my coloring book i used tracing paper i didn't do this on the computer i did it like completely oh no hold on we're here uh i did it completely like in the traditional way like doing it like this right so i can continue doing another i'm gonna do one more and then i'm gonna show you the other method and then this is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna repeat this on all the layers of our circles, right, in all the segments. We're gonna repeat this with different shapes and different designs. And whatever you decide is whatever you decide, basically. So you see, I've got another beautiful petal there. Looking so nice, looking so good, looking so good. I'm gonna have a little check in the chat on my thing. Oh, can you get up the, um, can you get the video up for me, is that all right? Open up the video yeah. on another tab on the browser yeah. in YouTube and you'll see the chat. Oh! So it's not going through YouTube Studio for some reason. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, okay, hold on guys, while I just do that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I'm gonna show you, bear with me one sec, I'm gonna show you uh the thing hold on hold on hold on have a dance break where's my little thing have a little dance break if you've got um if you've got your tracing paper you can just go ahead and like do it right now right while i just have a look and get my chat up so i can look don't uh, fresh the browser of the studio. Okay, no, I won't, I won't. That's Thank nice. you. Ooh, this is exciting. Are you sure it won't be to put too much stress on the thing? Hold on, guys, hold on. We're all right. You can have a little boogie. Oh, yay! Oh, there we go. We got all the chat. Yay! Uh, this is making me think of henna patterns. Oh, completely, right? Completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar. Very similar. <laughs> I did it freehand. <laughs> Love it. We're going freehand mad. The guidelines are helping. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Being a rebellious pupil and started colouring. Oh, my gosh, Jean. You are skipping ahead and that is absolutely fine. You can totally do that. All right. Let's carry on. I just want to show you... Shall I show you the template? I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do because I want you to see this option if you need it. We're gonna do it again for another one on one of the big ones, all right? So get your scrap cards. If you don't wanna do it freehand, 
this is how you make a template, right? You get your piece of card. This is a bit harder than doing it with the tracing paper, right? I'm going to put you on to the other camera. And what you want to do is you want to kind of try and line your card up. It's almost like doing it blindly a little bit. But you've got the edges of this. So you want to use the edges of your section. See how I'm bringing those lines down so I know that my shape is in there, right? That's the first step. Then I know I've got a little line here, roughly, super rough. And then I'm going to kind of draw like this. This is the easiest way I could think of making a template sort of blindly like this so you're kind of flicking it up and there's a little curve there roughly so if anything do this a bit bigger then cut it out and you can completely adapt it as you go all right so I hope this is making sense this is if you don't have tracing paper don't want tracing paper but you still want a super neat uh, shape every time. And this is making a template because you can draw around this over and over and over and over again, right? So I'm going to have a look, see if it measures up with my other one. Oh, it needs to be smaller. So I'm going to adjust that. I'm going to cut around like this. Oh yeah, and then I can go round this, this is my template, this tiny little thing, and I'm going to go round that on each segment. Again, I'm going to, i tell you what, I'm going to go around all of them and do my little thing where I look for the centre. That's where I know I'm going to put the points of my template and I'm going to draw around it like this oh well that one doesn't draw around completely nicely but hey ho oh I think I need to make it a little bit thinner let's make it a bit thinner so this is the best way I could think of to get exactly the same shape because you know if you draw around this how many times one two three four five six seven eight you've got it eight times right you've got exactly the same shape eight times which is what you want all right so choose your method. Obviously, that's going to depend on whether you've got tracing paper or not. It's also quite tricky to do it when it's this small. And I just love tracing paper, so I'm a big fan of tracing paper. I'm going to persevere for the sake of showing you the demonstration. I'm going to hold this. And once we get to doing the bigger shapes, this is like super easy. This is like easier. Well, is it easier than the tracing paper? Almost easier than the tracing paper. So you've basically created a super cool little template that you can use over and over again. You can even write on it, template, really small. And you can save that and use it over and over again. How cool is that? I'm gonna check my lovely chat. Uh, if I haven't got tracing paper, can I cut out a shape and draw around it? Yes, that is what we've done. Sorry, I didn't get to your message quite so quickly because of the technical difficulties, but we've got there. Uh, for my five-year-old, I was thinking you could draw with circles and have him use a stamp. Exactly. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally do that. I mean, there's a million ways you can create mandalas. You can do collage mandalas, which I've done before, which I absolutely love. There's so many ways, there's so many ways. This is just one way, this is just an easy way, all right? So I'm gonna go on to the next step, which is the kind of making this a, a bit more detailed because it's not really that detailed yet. So I'm gonna stick with my same segment and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a shape inside this little thing and I'm definitely a hundred percent gonna do this freehand because it's so small and what I'm gonna do is I really want to create like a kind of a semicircle within my sort of arch so 
I'm going to do this freehand because it's small, it's easy, and yeah, it's small and easy, right? And I'm not too fast, they're not going to be like perfect because it's small, it's tiny, but I'm going to choose to do this. So you can choose to do this, what I'm doing. You might want to do a little circle inside. It's really up to you, right? So this is like a semicircle, kind of like a scallop going round, scalloped edge on a curve, which is really nice. Uh, yes, you did it just after. <laughs> right. <laughs> we got there. I had to open another window. But the main thing is, I can see the chat now, so we're on it. We're on it, we're on it. Yeah, that is what the card was for. The card and the scissors. So now we know the options we've got to create the shapes. If we want to make something quite intricate, then we've got the options. We've got the tracing paper or we've got the template option. All right, so now what we want to be doing is just doing any details. Again, I'm pressing super hard so you guys can see you don't have to press that hard. I've got some other examples of templates here that I use in various like projects. I've got a little cat face. You could put little cat faces in it. How cool would that be? Triangle. I've got like a cupcake. How fun is that? I've got an ice cream, which is obviously too huge for this. But, you know, there's kind of examples of some shapes, basically. That you can use so you've just kind of got to be sort of creative thinking oh what kind of thing can I create that's why I wanted to write this list for you so that you've got like all these options of like the different things that you can put in right okay so let's go let's go what we're gonna do next now I still want to put one more little detail into my mandala on this section so I'm going to do one more semicircle. Oh my God, I'm going to do another semicircle. All right, I want to just do one more small one in here because I can, because I want to. It's looking beautiful. I'm doing my best to make it kind of aligned and sort of in the center. I know it's not going to be perfect, but I don't mind. I'm not bothered. So something like that is kind of really nice. I think uh, you don't really want to do, you don't want to go too much. you got to kind of know when to stop. Now I've done three shapes just in that little segment and I'm like, I'm done, right? I'm done with that. I want to move on. I want to move on to the next bit. All right, what did you do? Let me know in the chat what shape you did. What did you choose? Did you copy mine or did you do your own shape? Let me know what you've done. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me all the things. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on. Now I've got my next circle. Circles are very close together. Super, super close. So what I want to do is something different. I don't want to do another kind of petal shape. I don't want to do another semicircle although it could look really nice doing a semicircle going around could look really nice actually but i'm not gonna because i want to try something different so i'm gonna have a look at my list i did a teardrop petal beautiful i did petals and circles gorgeous uh neat gotta try this sometime yes halo i would love you to i would love you to hi joy how you doing welcome welcome joy's in the house oh yeah Awesome guys, so good. So have a think what you wanna do for your next one. I am gonna do some vertical lines because it's completely different to what I've done already. Um, I mean, dots is really fun. Just choose something, it doesn't matter, right? And then you don't wanna think about it too long either because if you think about something too long, it gets kind of boring and tedious. So I'm gonna do some vertical lines. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. I am gonna use each segment here and I am gonna draw a vertical line on the top of each petal. 
So going across here like this, that's going to divide my sections up, my little segments. Oh, I like that word, segment, it's such a nice word, segment. Oh, I do like to divide my segments. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is do that one more time again. So I'm gonna divide with another vertical line. Now, obviously this is just creating a completely different vibe to the, what I've done previously. And I'm happy with that. I want it to be contrasting. I want to have some kind of angles in there because everything's been curvy so far but nothing is right or wrong you might not want to do that you might just think no Leona that is not what is happening in my world and that is fine <laughs> yay hey showing up studio yay halos in the building oh yeah yeah so each of my segments has got three lines three vertical lines that fill the height of that circle right and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do shorter little vertical lines within the longer vertical lines so I'm just gonna go boop like this boop and sound effects really help <laughs> So, oh, and that one there, where the segment meets, that is a line as well. So I'm just gonna go boop, 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 boop. What did you do, Ava? Ava, I bet Ava has just gone like, stormed ahead as well. Let me know what you're doing, Ava. Let me, ha no, no, let me know how it is going. So yeah, I'm doing all my little vertical lines. You might not have a thin circle on yours. Your might, yours might be wider. So if it's wider, you've got to kind of make a choice again. Like, what am I going to do? What shape am I going to do? Am I going to keep it within each segment? Or am I going to make it bigger and make it span two segments, which is what we're going to do soon on the next ones? A sun and stars, yay! Oh my god, you could do a total astrological one, couldn't you? <gasps> if that's your thing, that would be amazing. <gasps> yes! Alright, I'm going to finish my bits off. I'm going to put my little tiny one. So I'm being mindful to kind of try and get the lines as close, you know, to the same length on each one as I possibly can right but again beginners don't try just don't try and do anything too complicated i always say this in my real life in person classes i always say don't even if you get the urge to do something crazy the best option is is just to choose the easier option because by the end you're going to be happy and you're going to be like get this real lovely like sense of achievement but if you kind of get too ambitious too quickly, you could end up disappointed and that's like a shame, do you know what I mean? So choose the easier option and then do another one, right? Do another one with your ambitions and the craziness and keep doing, keep creating, make more and more and more and more and more, right? And get more ambitious as you go along because you don't have to stop with one artwork, right? Hopefully this inspires you to go, oh, actually, I wanted to do this thing on this one, but it wasn't going to work, so I'm going to try it on another one, right? Because this is easy, right? So, yeah. Okay, shall we go on? Are we ready? Someone drop me a comment. Let's go on to the next layer, the next level. I'm going to have a sip of water. We're doing really great. We kind of nearly, we're like halfway, really, with this, and then we're going to get colouring. And the colouring just makes it so fun. And the black line if you want. Alright. Alright, alright. Doing so good. So. So, so, so. Now, my next one is quite small. I don't, my kind of outer one is super, super big. And my inner one is smaller. So I've got a choice now. What I can do is I could 
do a whole nother kind of shape in my small segment and go round. Or what I could do is I could almost like join the two segments together and use this circle as a guideline on where to put other things. And that is actually what I'm going to choose to do. You don't have to do that. All right, but that's what I'm going to choose to do. I'm going to use it as a guideline. So in like reality, if I was doing this not on the stream, I would have done this nice and lightly so I could erase that circle. Um, but it's not that way, and that's fine. So, oh, it's fancy. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to echo that kind of petal shape that I did because I've done semicircles, I've done a petal, I've done lines, and I wanna do like another petal. Cause like I said at the beginning, I want this to kind of be nature inspired. So I'm kind of thinking petals, leaves, that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do this time, which is different, is I am gonna use the span across the segments and I'm gonna use the line as my center line. So instead of actually working in a segment, I'm gonna show you how to work so that you use the line as a center point of your segment, all right? You don't have to do this. You could carry on, you could carry on filling the segments however you want, right? I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna do it, so I'm gonna give you like another option. And even if you wanna watch this again, like on a replay, you might think, I wanna try something else, all right? So what I'm gonna do for this is I am going to use this as my top point and I'm gonna draw like a kind of a leafy shape. So it's gonna be similar but not the same and I wanna kind of end it kind of in the middle here. So I'm just gonna be quite sketchy about it for now. I want it to be a little bit like this, sort of kind of like Maybe like a tulip petal or something. Something like that. That's the kind of shape I'm looking for. Right? So kind of leafy, kind of flower petal -y. I don't know, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press a bit harder now that I'm happy with that shape. And I've got my two options, haven't I? I could get my card I could put it on here, I could draw around, get the segment, try and kind of get the shape like this, cut it out, make it smaller, get it right shape and then use that to transfer it all the way around. Or I can use my tracing paper and I'm gonna use my tracing paper because that's my preferred method. So I'm gonna do that. If you wanna make a template now that we know how to make templates, we can do that. If you wanna, um, if you want me to repeat how to do the template, just tell me in the chat and I'll show you, all right? But if you're all good, if you're all happy, I'm gonna just carry on doing my tracing paper. And I'm gonna cut it because why have a whole piece of tracing paper flapping around when you don't need it, right? So. I am going to trace over this petal and then I'm going to flip it around. I think what I'm going to do as well, the good, a good idea when you're doing, when you get to your bigger segments is to do like it like that first, to so do the top, the bottom, you know, like compass points, do it like compass points and then fill in the other four, right? So I've got my one there, I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna flip it over to the bottom, I'm gonna align it up to the center as much as I possibly can, and I'm gonna draw over the top. Happy days, oh yeah. And then I'm gonna press a bit harder over the top because you never get kind of like a perfect, perfect, perfect line when you're using tracing paper, but it's good enough for me. And then I'm gonna go and do the other two on the other side. So I flipped over my tracing paper. I'm gonna press, and maybe you're making your template now. And that's cool. Whatever works. 
So it's happening. It's really coming together now. Really coming together. I hope yours is coming together. Let me know how you're getting on. Let me know. Let me know. Looking nice. I'm going to go over the top. And then I'm going to do those four in there. And equally, you could change the shape at this point, right? If you didn't want to do the same shape, you could have a different shape. I'm going to do another shape after this. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do like a swirly shape. And then I think that might be it for the basic design. Basic, basic. It's happening. My kind of flower-inspired mandala. Woo! Let's go across here. How's it going? Oh, we've got some cats in the chat. The cats have entered the chat. Love it. And then I'm going to do my final one over here. So it gives it, oh no, a, what am I saying, the final one over here, the final one down here. So it kind of gives it a little bit of variation, like the sizes, obviously, and the fact that you're using the segment center line rather than putting it inside the actual segment. So there's, you know, that's why there's like so many options. You see how some of them are touching and some of them aren't touching? I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. All right. So we need to add some details. I would like to add some details to mine. I would like to add some circles. Now that I've got this lovely kind of cross, I want to put some circles in here because I'm going to get that really nice kind of central kind of bit. So I could use my pen lid to do it, or I could do it freehand. I might try and do it freehand, because I do like working freehand, and I love drawing circles freehand. It's super fun. So I'm gonna draw these circles using that cross. So you're constantly using the circles that you've drawn as guides, right? That's how you get everything kind of like in the right spot and how everything kind of looks really beautiful and uh, symmetrical. And if you get to the point where you're not sure what to do, just have a little boogie. Just have a little boogie, have a little boogie break. And I'm going to give you some options. So I'm going to show you my little option thing again. Ooh, that looks so pretty. It looks so pretty. Looks so nice, looks so nice. Do, 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 do. So, here's my options again. Hope you can see those nice and clearly. So if you're stuck for some options, have a look at the screen right now and you shall see some options. Is that coming out nice and... Yes, there we go. Awesome source. So you've got your options, right? And there's more options than that, isn't there? I'm so glad you're all totally absorbed in your artworks right now. <laughs> It's super absorbing. I think because it's got that central point, because, you know, mandalas are these kind of meditative artworks that you're supposed to look at and it's supposed to make you focused and centered. They kind of draw you in when you're making them. You're like, oh my God, this is, I'm in this world. And yeah, and oh my God, we've got all the color to do. I mean, I'm excited about doing the color, but I'm gonna add one more shape and I'm gonna add two more shapes. I'm gonna two more shapes. I'm gonna kind of echo what I've done a bit here, and I want to do another kind of leafy shape, 
sort of around like this kind of leafy the avocado -y, like this just around just for some something else and I'm gonna trace this I'm gonna trace it so again templates cards scissors at the ready I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do one more shape and then I'm gonna finish this mandala for now because I mean we could go on for ages right we could go on for ages but you can go on for ages you can keep going uh, I need the loo but I can't break away <laughs> the mandala is drawing you in it's drawing you in love it <laughs> It's looking cool so far. Are you saying about mine or are you saying about yours? Uh, I'm sure yours is looking so beautiful. I'm flipping my tracing paper over. So nice. It's a bit like an eye actually. This has got like a little eye. Oi oi. Oi oi. And then the last one. So, you might get to the point now that you might want to start with the black pen, in which case you can go for it. Go, go, go. I'm just thinking I might just do one more little swirl. I want to do kind of like a swirl coming out of here. So, kind of something like that. And I want to just have that repeating all the way around. And remember, with ones in the future, if you're like super inspired by this and you want to do another one, remember you can make loads more segments. We've got eight segments, right? You can have loads more than that if you want to when you get to the ruler stage just keep on making more segments right but obviously the more segments you make the harder it gets and eight's quite a nice lovely round number isn't it so i'm just with this i'm going to make sure this is kind of in the center each one I admit it I was saying it about mine but yours is pretty fancy <laughs> I can't wait to see it I hope you send it to me please do send them to me send photographs I'd love to see at artist resource Instagram Facebook Twitter you know you know I love to see and I'll share them of course if you don't mind if you want me to and equally if you don't want me to just say this is for your eyes only Laura okay I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit I'm just being mindful of the space here like the space from you always want to look we call it negative space the space around the thing that you're doing so as you're doing a shape make sure the negative space the space around what you're doing is as equal as you can get it, right? That's what will help you put it in the right spot. You know, you can measure things if you want, but you know, I ain't got no time to measure. I don't mind a bit of measuring here and there, but. All right, we're looking groovy, it's coming on coming on it's coming on this is my final little thing for this one how you doing how's it going i'm happy with mine i like it it looks the way i wanted it to look i could go on forever and do loads more but i'm not gonna because we'll be here all night right and it's kind of fun if we just do it in nice bite-sized chunks but equally we could do it all night 
I mean, look, it doesn't matter, it's art, right? Get in the zone, get in the flow. Okay. Have you done yours? Tell me if you've done, tell me if you're ahead already. You're like, Leona, I've skipped ahead, I've finished the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing with doing it A3, right? I've done it A3 size so that you guys can see it really clearly. If you've done an A4 one, uh, it would have been probably a lot easier. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the black line. Now, you don't have to, if you don't want to do a black line because you're like, I don't know if I feel comfortable or confident, then don't do a black line. You could just go have a cup of tea, have some water, take five minutes out while we all do the black line if you don't want to do it, right? But if you do want to do the black line and you fancy getting a bit adventurous, grab your black pen and let's do it, right? Drawing freehand and having to correct a blob. <laughs> Love it, Jean, right? We do, uh, the eraser is our friend, let's be honest, right? Um, so when you come to the black line, you want to make sure that you're only doing, you're only outlining the things that you want to be there. Because obviously I've used this circle here as a guideline, haven't I? I haven't used it, so on my one, I'm probably gonna erase that out at the end. Um, so you wanna just be mindful, think, oh, do I wanna keep that as a segment, or do I, want it, do I want it as a whole thing? So you see this one in the middle here, I might wanna erase all that and have that as a whole lovely, beautiful circle, like in its own right. So just before you do the black line, you wanna just think of editing things. Like, do I want that? Does that want to be there? If I do that line, will that not look right? And things like that, okay? And then you want to choose the finest black pen that you've got. So if you've got choices, you might not have choices, you might only have one black pen and that's fine. Um, if you've only got one black pen, use that one. If you've got a choice, then use the finest one. So the thinnest one first. And then if you make any mistakes, you can use the thicker one to go over it, and it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to go through this. I can do this fairly quickly because I spent the whole time doing all of these ones. Like, I've had so much practice, you know, doing all this. So I can go quite fast. So I'm just going to go for it. Uh, but you take your time. Flowery and fat. I love that you keep saying it's fancy. I'm not trying to be fancy. <laughs> I've just done the first thing that's kind of come to mind. This is just what's happened. <laughs> this is just what's happened. All right, so let's go for it. I'm going to go do my black line. I'm going to give you some tips along the way for doing the black line. And then we're going to get to colouring. We'll have about half an hour for colouring, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so should we do it? Should we get this done? Let's do it. Let's go, go, go. It's all happening. It's all happening here. All right. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start with the smallest circle. You definitely want to start smaller and work out. Again, start from the center and work out using the black line. I am going to do the center point because I definitely want that. Oh, if you're interested, I'm using a 0 0.8 fine liner for anyone interested. And then I'm going to always do segment per segment. So it's easier always to break down doing lines or curves or anything if you go segment by segment by segment. If you try and do the whole circle, see how I'm doing a segment, then I'm gonna do another segment, then I'm gonna actually gonna turn my paper a bit, do another segment, I'm gonna come around, do another segment. If you try and do the whole thing, especially as a beginner, it's gonna, end in unhappiness we don't want that we don't want that so that's why i'm saying if you're like oh i don't know about this outlining thing don't do it just don't do it there's nothing wrong with keeping it pencil right you don't need to worry about it okay this is coming along fabulously well thank you darling thank you so much it's all happening it's mandala art mania 
All right, so I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do my... Oh, these could be like little rainbows. Oh, these could be little rainbows in here. Can they? Oh, make sure I don't get my head in. Don't get your head in the way. So how's everyone going? How's everyone going who's not in the chat? Reninha, I hope you're still with me. Keep it on going. Who else we got? My mum. I hope my mum's still there. Hi mum. My mum's really good at drawing, so I'm sure she's rocking this. I'm going to turn it around a bit. You see how I've gone over my lines a bit? No worries. I'm not worried about it. You've got to be easy with yourself while you're doing this. Oh, I actually really like it. Okay, I'm going to go around and do my vertical lines. Boop, 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 boop. I don't know why my vertical lines have got sound effects, but they have. So maybe some of your shapes have got sound effects as well. Don't be afraid to lay out that sound effect. <laughs> the things I say on this stream. <laughs> Don't be afraid to let out your own inner sound effect. But where was I? I can't quite see where it is now. Is it there? It's got to be there. And if you're like on the black pen and you think, oh, I want to add something, don't add it in black pen. Add it in pencil and see if you like it. Because then you can rub it out. If you just go to black pen straight away and you don't like it, then you'll be like, no, and there's really nothing you can do apart from get a bit of paint and like a bit of white paint and cover it with white paint. Uh, but that's about all you can do to get rid of this. That's like the old school way, right? Okay, let's do, let's do, let's do the next bit. So, oh, just dropped something on the floor, never mind. All right, so I'm gonna do the next bit. Now I don't know which of the top is, I think this was the top. I kind of wanna do my circles here, so I'm gonna again do my segments. I'm gonna go round. And a top tip, as you start getting wider with your circle, is not just to turn the page, but to use your wrist as a pivot. So you kind of put your wrist onto the paper and you pivot from it. And drawing, actually, which I go into a lot in my online courses, um, drawing is a lot about muscle memory. So the more practice you get, the better you get at it because it's kind of hardwired into your body. So the best thing you can do is practice. It's like anything. It's like playing a musical instrument or anything. It's like you've just got to practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to keep spinning around. And now I want to sing Kylie Minogue song and I can't. <laughs> we go round, we keep going round. Yeah, amazing. All right, now I'm going to do the big ones. I'm actually going to just go and do all this. I'm going to do the circles separately because I want to get into a rhythm. My hand, like, get into a rhythm. Of those circles so I'm going to do that separately but this because it's a similar shape I'm going to go round and down round and down that's another thing when you're doing it you can kind of think of the movement round and down round and down round and down that kind of helps maybe it helps Round and down, round and down. And I'm going to 
give you such a good top tip for your final outer circle. If you're like Leona, I've never used a pen before to do this, and now the outer circle is coming up, how am I gonna do an outer circle perfectly? I have got a really cool thing that you can do to make it super easy. So hold on for that, it's coming in about two minutes time. Gorge, gorgeous, gorgeous, how are we all doing? Right, let's do this circle. Is that it? And then I'm gonna do my little, it's kind of like a wave, isn't it? It's like a, like a little wave happening. Lovely, thanks Halo. I'm so glad you're still here. Yay. All right, so now I'm gonna give you, are you ready for this top tip guys? I'm coming at you with a top tip. Tell me that you're ready for the top tip for the final bit of the black line. Are you ready? <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. Are you ready? Someone tell me you're ready. <laughs> Someone must be out there. All the people that aren't in the chat, say yes, we're ready. All right. Cool. Okay, so. Ready? Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> All right, so the top tip for your outside circle is this. Do not feel like you have to do the whole segment. So you know I've been saying segment by segment by segment. If you've done a small dinner plate, it's quite difficult if you've had no experience to do that as a whole curve. So what I want you to do is break it up into smaller sections. So you could do like a dash you could do a dash and a dot, a dash and a dot, a dash and a dot, or you could do all little dots, or you could do, I mean, what else could you do? You could do loads of patterns. You could do like three dashes and two dots, three dashes, two dots, three dashes, two dots, all right? Whatever you like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dot in the middle, and I've done this wave, so I know that that's kind of the center, sort of, roughly, so I'm gonna do a nice little dot above each of mine, like this. And then this is actually, Ava and Mira, if you're still here, um, this is actually kind of like a henna style, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another dot in between that. So we've got another one, so breaking that section in half. So from the top of this to here, I'm putting another dot, from this dot to there, I'm doing another dot. From here to here, another dot. From here to here, another dot, right? All the way around. So that each segment has now got three dots, like pretty evenly placed. Pretty much evenly placed. Yes, eek, I'm behind, I'm still on the pencil, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, you take your time. Take your time. And remember, you don't have to do the black line if you don't want to. And you can just watch me doing the colouring. It's easy. Obviously, you've done all the hard work. You've done all the hard work. Yes, Jean. Meow. To Halo. Hi, Craig. How you doing? Yay, Craig's made it. The last half an hour. <laughs> just in time for the top tip. The kind of henna tattoo sort of top tip for not doing completely complete curves if you don't want to you're doing dots and dashes so I'm gonna do two dashes 
in between. I tell you what I'm going to do actually. I'm going to erase this so you can see it. Because you're not going to see it because there's this in the way. So I'm just going to erase that segment. And fingers crossed. Get into the pen now. Awesome. Take your time though, darling. Take your time. Please don't rush it because it's really important you take it slow with the pen. So I'm going to do two dashes in between my dots. So I've got equal placement, right? All right, so I'm going to do that again. You don't need to erase your line because you need it as a guide. But I'm going to show you so you can see clearly, right? So I'm going to do two dashes. Two dashes in between my dots. And again, if you kind of mess it up and you don't like what you've done, remember you can use a thicker pen. So if you've got like a Sharpie or some kind of like thicker marker pen, now's your chance if you make a mistake just to use the thicker one. And just make it part of the design. Yeah, no one will know you made a mistake because you just, you know, it was there already. It was supposed to happen. You know, making mistakes. I'm sure if you've got children, you've told your children this before, you know, there's no real such thing as a mistake. Mistakes are kind of learning, growing processes. You know, it's a happy, happy thing when a mistake happens because it kind of turns something into something else. You know, happy accidents. So I'm just going around doing my two dashes in between and it's got this lovely thing, this lovely kind of, and it, what I quite like about it is it's not a solid circle, like that it breaks it up and it feels like lighter, you know? Spreading the good vibes beyond the circle. So I'm just going to erase this and I'm going to do my two lines in between. So good. And a woman, the final one. Ooh. Ooh. Dash, dash. Dash, dash. So, as a finishing touch, what you can do is you can go over and have a look and you could introduce anything that you've like done already, but to a different section. So you could add some dots and dashes somewhere. So you could add a dot, another dot, so like some darker dots, like maybe in here. But then it's gonna make them look too much like eyes and I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna put a dot, a black dot on the top of here. I don't want to, to them to look like eyes, really. I don't really mind if they are eyes. But. Um, anything else? I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy with it. I don't want to do too much. That's it. Put in the, oh, did you hear that? It went really, it went like, anyway, okay. All right, so. When you've done the pen, erase all the pencil out. Just give it a minute, maybe just blow it, make sure that it's dry. If you want to uh, do a thicker pen, uh, I'm, af I'm afraid of computing it. Oh, do you mean colouring it? It looks so good as it is. Well, look, I'm going to give you some top tips about colouring. So hang on there. Hang on in there. I'm going to give you some top tips. I'm just going to erase my thingy. Because uh, I press so hard, I think that you'll probably, you might just see some of the lines coming through. But, never mind. Never mind. Never mind, never mind. Just make sure it's all nice and dry. If you're not sure, just wait for a few minutes and then erase the pencil. I still quite like the fact that there's that sort of larger, you know, my Ikea bowl. Oh, actually, Mira said earlier, didn't she, if you wanted to use 
these to go round. If you want to take them back and then do the black pen, you can do that. It doesn't always come out that great because sometimes the circle can not go right, but you can do it like that. You can do that as well. That's another option. Um, I'm always up for like teaching people how to draw and things like that. So I prefer that you kind of learn how to do it um, freehand if you can. Learning is always good. So yeah, as I thought, this is not erasing fantastically because I pressed so hard, but never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What I do like is I quite like these segments. So I'm gonna quickly get my pen and I'm just gonna draw these segments in. I quite like these ones. Oh, that one went off a bit, never mind. Yeah. Woo! Happy days. So I'm not going to erase that bit. Yeah, colouring, not computing. Yeah, I thought that's what you meant. All right. So, pause for a minute. And I'm going to have a little chat about colouring. And when you're erasing, like hold your paper, like, you know, like hold it with your hand quite wide so you don't you don't hold it with your other hand it could all scrunch all the paper up all right this is happening guys this is happening all right so it's time to choose your colors do you have a choice of colors or do you just have a couple of colors around like it's kind of good if you've got quite a few like if you've got five or six colors should we choose five or six colors right off the bat or if you've only got five or six colors then use those five or six colors let's have a look I'm gonna put that there for a bit of colorfulness I'm gonna get all this out of the way so I don't need that anymore Gonna get everything out of my way. All this out of the way. I have a 72 pack. It was a gift. <gasps> that sounds so good. Happiness. Happiness right there. 72 colors i mean it's almost too much choice but yours is gonna turn out so good so i've just got these don't want color soft i really love them i've used them for years and years i use them to color this in which is my coloring book because they're so they just blend so nice i mean check it check that for the blend some super beautiful blendage happening some blendage that is a word <laughs> I don't think it's a word. <laughs> All right, so let's choose some colours, guys. Choose some colours. What are you going to choose? What are you going to choose? I'm going to choose green because I 100% like want to use some green, so I'm going to use all my greens. If you just got one green, that's fine. I'm going to use green. I'm probably going to use pink. I'm not going to use browns. I do love things that are in browns, but I'm not going to use browns. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take away the ones I don't want. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use black, probably. I'm probably not going to use grey. White is really good to blend. No. Maybe I'll use blues. I'm not going to use yellow ochre. I don't really like that. I'm not going to use acid yellow because I don't really like oh, Maybe. <laughs> I'm spoiled for choice, right? 
spoiled for choice. So, um, I'm going to use some kind of mixture between pinks and purples. I don't know about peach, but I do like that kind of pink, that kind of salmony pink. Oh, can you see this on the thing? So I'm going to use this kind of, it's called blush pink in mine, but it's a kind of a salmon pink, a kind of a magenta pink. Then I've got some indigo. This is sort of, should be with the blues really. So I'm just spending a couple of minutes just sorting out my colours. Just thinking, all right, I've got this, I've got this. What have I got? What do I like? What do I like? Do I like doing things that are in harmony with each other? Do I like doing colours like blues and greens where they're kind of similar? Or do I like doing like super contrasting things like purple and yellow, like contrasting colours? Or orange and blue? Like orange and blue is one of my favourite, favourite colour combinations. Completely opposite on the colour wheel. Uh, you don't even have to worry about all of that. You can just think, what do I like? Do I like things kind of in harmony, like soft and gentle, or do I like bold, in your face colour? So I would kind of make that kind of choice right off the bat. And your artwork will kind of guide that. Is it like super bold, or is it like kind of gentle and relaxed and easy? Do you have shapes that mean certain colours so do if you have hearts you might want to do like loads of red in it or you might want to do pink hearts you know what I mean a shape might determine the colour that you want to do it so if that's the case then do that so you can start anywhere on your artwork right you can start in the centre you can start on the outside you can start with the background you can pretty much start wherever you feel most comfortable starting and where you kind of feel drawn to starting. Like, do you want to do the center point first or are you kind of drawn? So I've got like these swirls, which are kind of very watery. So I'm kind of thinking, well, do I want to do my kind of like watery colors for a shape that kind of suggests water? Do you know what I mean? There is no right or wrong. You just do what you want. It doesn't really make a difference. With my one, because I've got like an inner circle, it kind of separates the two. So it's like this inner flower and then there's an outer flower. So the background kind of in the segments of that inner flower kind of is sort of suggesting to me like greens because it's like flower on a green background. So I'm gonna start with green. That's my decision, right? Get it sorted, mate. <laughs> Get it sorted. Get on with it. <laughs> I'm chatting away. I'm having a great time. I hope you're having a great time as well. I'm having a great time. I hope, really, really hope you are. Because <laughs> we're only like a carb on it. I'm going to do green. I'm going to choose a mid green for now. Because then I want to add some darks to it. But I'm just going to choose a mid green. And I'm just going to kind of colour these inner segments. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Maybe I'm not going to say any more tips other than that because that's quite a lot, right? But you want to make sure you've got your any bits of erasers out of the way. What would you call the bits from the erasers? Eraser shavings? Eraser. I'm oh, having a blast. Thank you, Tammy. I'm having a blast with you. I'm having a great time. So I'm gonna color all these segments in the same color. I segmented them off, but that's gonna kind of help me when I come to a darker green. If you don't have um, darker colors or lighter colors of a color, so say you've only got one green, you can apply different pressure to get it lighter or darker. So if you apply not so much pressure, it's going to be a lighter green. And if you're going to apply lots of pressure, it's going to be darker, right? So you can do that if you haven't got more than one green. No problemo. We've got it sorted. We know what to do. We know what to do. 
Loving it so much. Still not being to the loo. <laughs> Jane, you're excused. <laughs> you can come to the loo and come back. <laughs> Ran out of a yellow I needed. Oh, that sucks. Yellow is kind of so important. If, you, if you've got yellows, use your yellows. Yellows are so, so good. I'm going to get to that. Usually I start with yellow, actually, because it's the lightest, but I felt drawn and compelled to start with green. Just on the whole nature vibe. And what I might even do, before I even go to do the dark, I'm going to skip and I'm going to come to the background and I'm going to give it a really light kind of just hardly putting any pressure using this green on my back segments I might even do like a bit of gradient so like have it darker in here more pressure and then have it lighter coming towards the edge because of the dots and the dashes oh yeah I'm liking that I'm liking that a lot so with the bigger sections you've got to kind of try and get a bigger stroke of colouring pencil but hey look we could be here all night if I was going to give you all the millions and gazillions of tips that are possibly available and I'm not going to do that let's just colour it in right <laughs> let's just colour it in <laughs> I'll give you some tips along the way of course let me know if you're stuck on a colour to choose and you're like, I want it to do this, but I've only got this. What should I do? Let me know. I'll do my little gradient in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So spinning it around. Spinning your artwork around, don't feel restricted by, you know, it being in one spot. That would just be annoying. Ooh! Yeah, and I would definitely say, like, if you, you know, start with a colour of your choice and then think about where else that colour could go because it's quite nice to like, you know, you're almost color blocking. So you're like, okay, where is, in my case, where do I want all the green to go? And then I'm gonna do all the green, you know? And if you're not sure, just like miss a few segments and then, yeah, put it there. So nice. And the good thing about having pencils that are really soft is that you don't see the stroke so much. It kind of blends out really nicely. The trouble with harder colouring pencils is you kind of see every stroke. So you can experiment with like the type of stroke that you do. So maybe you're not going up, down, up, down, up, down. Maybe you're going in little circles or something. Getting a bit of texture happening. Anyway, that's something for another time. All right, so I'm gonna grab my darker green and I'm just gonna make some little darker kind of accents. So sort of along the segments, I'm gonna do a couple of like vertical lines along my segments because I drew my segments in black pen. So why not highlight them a little bit? Ooh, and then what else? Maybe a little bit in the gradienty bit, just a little bit under here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Is yours having a bit of a theme? Can you see a theme with yours? If you can, let me know in the chat 
got a, it's got a bit of a like mine's kind of nature. If yours seems to have a theme that you weren't aware of, or give it a theme with the colours. Oh, a couple more. All right, choices, choices, choices. Another thing that could work well with green is I could do like a lime green in here. I might, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do yellow inside that. Also, it looks like a little pea. It's like a little pea pod. Actually, I'm growing peas at the moment. Maybe I've got peas on the brain. <laughs> it's my pea inspired <laughs> mandala. <laughs> what is happening? Mine looks like an LSD overdose. Oh, that's cool. Looking psychedelic is so good. Making it look all psychedelic colours is beautiful. Right, I've switched to yellow. I've gone for quite a deep yellow. For my peas in my pea pod. Because obviously that's what it was. Obviously. And then I'm going to do yellow in the centre. Because it's a circle, so I found a, the same shape. So I've had the same shape here and here and here and here and here. Using this, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna echo that in the center. So that's what kind of helps it tie in. So if you're using one color, have a look for similar shapes around your mandala that you can put and use that color with, right? I might even do like these yellow as well. I do love a golden yellow. And I mean, I'm gonna go straight ahead and use orange because I am a huge fan of orange. Don't stop me now, I'm going for orange. Not that anyone was gonna, but. <laughs> Gotta go for orange. So much fun. We're nearly there, guys. We're doing really well. Doing so, so well. I reckon we've definitely got about another 10 minutes. So we're gonna go 10 minutes over today, but that's fine because we're doing so great. You can't put a time on art, really. Well, you can. Wednesdays at seven o'clock. <laughs> Wednesdays at seven o'clock. All right, I'm gonna blend. I'm gonna put a bit of yellow over the top of that orange just to make it kind of a little bit lighter and also to smooth out the pencil lines. So if you use a lighter color on top of whatever color you used and then you've got soft pencils, you can get a bit of a blend happening Oh, which is lush. Oh, we like a bit of a blend. Okay. I don't know if I want to go to red. Now, I was thinking kind of warm colours because they're my favourite colours. Uh, if I go straight to red now, I feel like it's like too much. So I'm, I think I might go to pink, like a magenta pink here. I think, I think I'm going to do that. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> shall I, shall I, shall I, or shall I go crazy and go red? Oh, maybe I should. Maybe I should go for red. I'm thinking, yeah. All right. See, did you see how quick that decision was made? Because the thing is with red, you've got to be careful. Like if you don't want it to be in your face, don't do red right because red is just gonna go boof so if you want to draw attention to a part of your artwork then you want to add some red because that's gonna go your eye is gonna go to the red right but i like bold colors and red and green are contrasting colors so i'm like it's gotta be done 
got to be done that's just what naturally I was like yeah then I was like should I do pinks it's not so crazy it's red but then I'm like just do it don't hold back just do it oh yeah it is happening now it is happening and then I'm just going to grab my orange and I'm just going to go over the top of the red just to lighten it up, blend out those um, pencil marks. Ooh, got to go. Love you. You too, sweetie. Thank you so much for joining. Wishing you well. Sending you all the love. See you soon. Bye, bye, bye. Um, I think I am going to do these bits in the background red. Oh. I just feel like going for it. Okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to go lightly. I cut maybe these are a bit flame like. I mean, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to press a bit lighter and then I'm going to go over with an orange. And then so I get a bit of a lighter red than the one that I've done there. Even though when I did go over it with orange, but I pressed quite hard. So I'm just going to do another sort of technique and just go lighter and get a bit more of a different hue. A different hue, baby. So these are kind of more like orange because I'm going to press harder with that. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. I've gone out there. I've gone totally, totally bold. Not holding back. Oh, I've gone over the lines a bit. If you go over the lines, just get your eraser and raise it out. lovely people how you getting on how is it going Ooh. remember as well if you're not sure you can always take a break from it and like come back to it like don't feel you've got to like be pushed and rushed to like make a decision you know but then at the same token just kind of just just go with your instincts there's always another opportunity there's always another art what you could create you know you won't kind of like you won't get like the maximum happiness out of it if you're like scared right I'm gonna do a little bit of red in here to make this pop and then I'm going to do my petals. What colour should I do my petals? What should I do? What should I do? I'm sure you're thinking, Leona, I'm thinking about my own work. 
<laughs> I'm not bothered about what you're doing now, right? I'm in the zone. <laughs> in the zone. Um, purple? Hmm. Purple, not blue. Don't want to do blue, actually. Purple and pink. Purple. Ava and Mira, in there with the purple. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking that. How's yours coming along? Are you finished? How's it all going? I'm thinking purple and pink. Should I do purple for the outside and pink on the inside? Or pink? Mostly pink and a little bit of maybe purple on the outside. You see, I've left this bit because I'm like, that doesn't matter for now. I might even leave that white. You can leave bits white, you know? Bits that are white look gorgeous. Should I go for this bin? Oh, that's quite dark, that is, though. What about this one? Oh, that's a bit better bit more of a lilac mm. lilac red and purple it's definitely not my usual combo lilac red lilac red purple and green that is not my usual combination how interesting how interesting that's not normally what I do but you know hey I'm up for it I'm thinking like this kind of this and then a sort of pink or maybe what about alternating them I might do a, a pink and then a purple pink and then a purple that could look good and then maybe the center one I leave so we have so oh great minds yeah so I'm gonna just sort of sketching a bit of colour because I'm not sure. So I'm going to go, oh, okay, I'm going to put that there. This is like what I do when I'm doing mosaics is I lay the tiles down and then just see what it looks like before committing. Because I could have raised this because it's a light purple. And then I'm thinking pink. Because pink and red or pink and orange is a kind of an interesting combination. Some people like super, super don't like it. I think pink and orange together is like amazing and I'm gonna add some yellow around here to this to just make this a bit more orangey so you get that pink and orange pink and orange and purple and orange look lovely together so I'm thinking this is all gonna work I mean yeah Right, I'm going for it. I'm going for it, guys. I've decided. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you feeling like you're going for it? Or are you feeling like you're unsure? I'm going to just go for it. Woo, so nice. And again, I'm not pressing very hard. Just so I can kind of block it in. Oh yeah. And also you might want to give your hand a break. Like if you're like you've been pressing hard and then you like you might want to just press lightly just for your hand to chill out a little bit because it can be quite you know quite the old job coloring especially when you get to the big bits see i'm wondering whether or not i might leave those bits white because i just think even though they're Anyway, we'll see. So we're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. 
Nearly, nearly there. Oh, I'm nearly there. Are you nearly there? Oh, we'll finish mine tomorrow. It's all looking great. Perhaps everyone could send their designs and show next week. That would be amazing. Um, if you look on my Instagram, which is instagram.com forward slash artist resource, you'll see all the collages from last week. And... I don't think I did that for the painting one uh, and the marbling one I showed on the story. Yeah, so on the, for last week's the collage, you can see the people. So we'll do that again. So please do send me your photos. That would be amazing. You can message me. You can email me. You can message me on Facebook Artist Resource, Twitter Artist Resource, or Instagram Artist Resource. Any one of those methods is good for me and hopefully good for you. So yeah, send, send, send. I reckon I'm gonna be five more minutes, guys. Just to give you an estimated time, I'm gonna be five more minutes. Five more minutes of fabulousness. Thank you, Leona, loved it so much. Still coloring, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm gonna be here for five more minutes. If you wanna stick with me for five more minutes, you can do it. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. If you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna make a bit more pressure on this now, now that I'm happy with the colors. Yeah. Woo. So nice. Yeah, if you need to take a break, take a break because you want it to look gorgeous, right? And hopefully I've inspired you to make another one. Like, did you get some ideas when you were going for it? Were you like, oh my God, I'm going to do this now. You know? I'm still colouring too. I'm only on the outside. Amazing, amazing. It's got to be done, right? So close. Do they do look like eyes. Mine look like eyes. Can you see on your artwork if yours looks like anything? Eyes is such a common motif, isn't it? It's like super, super, super common. get this to some kind of like nearly finished stage to show you guys and then so much fun hey who'd have thought it how easy it is to create your own mandala super super easy oh look at that pink oh look at that oh yeah Magenta is just so gorgeous. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Amazing. I've chosen tutti frutti colors, like green, pink, yellow, and purple. Love the combo. Love it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, final top tip with coloring. Go in the direction of your shape. So if your shape is curvy, do curvy kind of lines. You know? Hope that makes sense. Curve around with your shape. Make them look a bit 3D. So I've only touched just lightly on colouring today. I do have an online course which has got a colouring project in it. It's how to draw sea life animals. And there's a lobster and a sea turtle. And I've got loads of cool colouring tips in that if you're interested in that. You can go to artistresource.co.uk forward slash online courses. Have fun with 
with it. Oh, right. Little bit of purple. Little bit of... Oh, no. It's not the one I wanted. Little bit of darker purple just here. I mean, I do want to spend more time, but I'm going to round this up now, guys. So I'm just going to add a bit of darker purple around here, around the bottoms. This shade near the center. Just to give it a bit of a lift. If you've got, I mean, Tammy, you have got a seriously amazing, like, pack, 72 colours. You could get some serious gradients going on with that. Some serious ombre effects happening. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shall I do the middle bit? I don't think so. I think the white looks nice. I'm gonna grab a bit of white just to help go over that bit when I made a mistake. Or well, not when I made a mistake, but when I was like testing out a color. Um, I'm also gonna use the white just to blend out some of this purple. So on the tops, white is a really good, my final tip of the day. Ashley, hi, how you doing sweetie? Thank you for joining, yay! How awesome. We've made mandalas. You've come in, I'm like, I've gone over 15 minutes, but I'm having such a great time that, you know, hey ho. Um, we made a mandala. I hope you can watch the replay. All you need is some pencils, a piece of paper, and circular things that you've got around your house, like mugs and plates and cups and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty easy. Is it easy, guys? Tell Ashley that it's been easy. <laughs> and all the options, I mean, I've given you two hours and a quarter filled with top tips. I mean, this is the gift that keeps on giving, let's just be honest, right? Yes, we'll give it a go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think two hours is about a good time that you need a two hour block to sit down, get a cup of tea, maybe a bit of chocolate if you're feeling that way, and uh, go for it. You know? I mean, I'm happy. I could do loads more, but I could be here all night. So I'm gonna say, that's it. I'm gonna say, easy, there you go. Jane's still here and she found it easy. Yes. We've had such a good time. I've enjoyed myself immensely. I hope you have too. Um, we've done really well. We've done really well. We produced a beautiful mandala in two and a quarter hours and it looks gorgeous so this is obviously going to be up on the replay so you can watch this whenever you like in your own time do another one check out you know all those lovely things that i gave you all the examples do another combination do something else try another mandala with a completely different design um and a hundred percent please send me a photograph of what you've done and i will share it on my social medias at artist resource you can send me a private message you can email me through my website artistresource.co.uk please check out my online courses artistresource.co.uk forward slash online courses there's drawing courses there's painting courses there's a sun capture glass painting course there's a mosaic course and they're all so affordable so I would love it if you check those out. It's all real time, so you get the videos and you can pause them whenever you like, but you can like this, you can make along with me in real time. So I hope you enjoy those. I hope you've enjoyed today. So please spread the word, tell people about my live streams, 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Come join me because I hope you're having loads of fun. I'm having loads of fun. <laughs> Did I say I'm having loads of fun? <laughs> I'm having loads of fun. <laughs> Came in late, but looks good. Thank you, Alan. So lovely to have you here. Yeah. 
So that was it. That was the mandala. Happy days. Cannot wait to see your guys' mandalas. Um, it's going to be really amazing. If you want to check out my colouring book as well, if you want to have a look, leonamatuzak.com. L-E-O-N-A-M-A-T-U-S-Z-A-K.com. I've only got a few copies left if you want one. Uh, yeah. Take it easy. Stay safe and well. Until next Wednesday at 7 p.m., come join me or check out the courses. Do one of those in the meantime, right? Brilliant, Leona. Thank you so much, Ashley. I was so glad you turned up right in the end there. Da -da -da -da. All right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Goodbye to everyone. Goodbye to everyone that watched um, and couldn't come in. Like, I don't have an account or anything like that. Thank you guys for watching. It's lovely to have you. Um, and if you do have a YouTube account, please subscribe. Subscribe. That would be great. All right, guys. Lots of love. Take care. Look after each other. See you real